Hi YouTubers, this is Kaminari. Um, this is my first vlog as of living here in the campus area. This is the vlog that explains everything. Um, before I moved out of my, um, before I ever moved in here, I've been going through a lot of rough stuff lately. For example, um, short lease, being bought out, um, being kicked out due to we never got along, or this past incident I had with a roommate. Um, we call that the Whitehall incident. Back in November 15th, 2014, I have moved into a lady's house. She welcomed me into her home, but she was the one who answered my ad. On Craigslist, it's kind of shady, but it's the best way we can do it so far besides newspaper. Um, according to um, my ad, I've told them I'm only a afford about $300 worth of rent and some money for utilities. She took advantage of that and said I can only pay $100 a week. Eh, it's not that bad, I mean. But then again, it got me to wonder. I, let's say I pick her brain. The lady in question, her name was Denise Johnson. Um, to explain who what she is, she's a conniving bitch. Forgive me, YouTube and the FCC, but I have to admit, it is the truth. She explained that she had a girlfriend at the time who she had a fight with, and she ended up moving that very night. Without any warning or recollection, they just, she decided to leave. And she took a lot of items. Um, it turns out, I believe it was a lie. Make me feel sorry for her. Now, it's kind of typical for someone who's down on their luck. She also explains that my, um, my rent money will help her with her, um, how can you say, her debt. She had, like, I don't know, $5,000 in debt with utilities besides her rent. Her rent is $500 for a two-bedroom townhouse. And I wasn't too sure. Um, she was on PIP, which is kind of like our version for low-income families or low-income individuals to stay on top of utilities such as water, electric, and gas. Unfortunately, due to her age and my age, being her about in her 50s and me being a young lady myself, um, to, yeah, <laughs> I know, that's kind of like, whoa. Anyway, she had manipulated me to the point where I've gone paranoid. Or question my own sanity. It got me to the point where I have to see a psychiatrist and I haven't seen one since March. And because of her, I end up mo trying to look for a new place to live at least to get some, some peace of mind. Um, she made comments like, oh, you are looking for some items to steal. But all I was doing was looking for items to help her fix the items, like such as her computer. Her computer was a total mess. Her computer is a little older than my current computer right now, which I have actually liked. Um, she made threats that are either she is threatened to kick me out, she is threatened to harm me physically. She gave me, called me names such as slut, whore, bitch, hoe, you name it. She made comments that are so explicit, like I will literally suck dick for a place to live. And believe it or not, 
I've gotten phone calls from people, especially men, who are willing to board me on the payment of sexual acts. Excuse me. For the record, if you are watching this, niece, I don't do that. I respect myself fully, unlike you, who spends her money on lottery tickets and cigarettes. If you value your time on earth, I suggest you quit and live longer. It's the best thing for you. Anyway, it got to the point where I've been looking for places and I prefer OSU campus because you are close to everything. Courthouses, libraries, grocery stores, shopping malls, and other shops that are restaurants you can go to and meet with friends. That's why Whitehall it'll take me two hours to get to work. I work in Worthington or border of Worthington and Columbus. Eh, it's not a really good area, but Whitehall is not that good either. I mean, seriously, I mean, if you live in Whitehall, sure, it's a nice place, but it's no, I don't know, it's not Bexley, it's not Polaris, it's not Powell. Um, if you're wondering where I live, I live in Central Ohio. Central Ohio is kind of like, oh, you don't really exist, but you do exist. But believe me, guys, in pop culture, Columbus, Ohio is awesome. <laughs> anyway, to, anyway, around, oh, during the four months I've been out of the house, like, all day, is either going to libraries, go to work, go to Panera. Yes, I hung out at Panera. A bad area. Literally, it's not really bad at all, but I had no choice. I was at my wit's end. I had no choice but to leave early in the morning and come home late at night. And it doesn't matter if I'm coming home late or coming home early. She wants her money. And every week, it's the same thing. I end up spending per month. Five hundred dollars on rent alone. By law, yes, I owe her pretty much four hundred dollars, but I've already paid that in full after April. Thank goodness. However, my plan was to move out. I was not allowed to move out until mid March, May, and that is because of my six months lease. Honestly, if I ever had a chance to read my lease, I'll just say, look, we're not getting along. If I decide to move out, the only thing that will hang me over my little head would have been my security deposit. And by law, she has to pay that back in the state of Ohio. She refuses, and she said the only way I can get that back if I pay it month by month. Well, um, to be honest, that was never the agreement. According to the agreement, I only pay week by week. Um, and fortunately on my end, she has no knowledge of how to rent or sublease a room. Um, that is kind of the truth. Because she doesn't know how to. She made comments like, I don't know how to, can you teach me? And I've been in enough places to live where I know how to lease and how to sublease. Unfortunately, in this current place, I am no, I don't have a lease to my name yet. Um, okay, anyway. God, um, at the end of April, April 30th, I was going to my doctor's appointment to meet with my psychiatrist to see if I can do anything better to better myself and probably get some more medication or get a different medication. <laughs> I receive a text message. Denise was asking me to pay rent that very morning. B 
because she has to fill her prescription. Remember, this is an older lady. She's about in her mid-50s. And according to her scripts, it only cost her about $30. My rent was about $100 a week. Now, I was honest with her. I told her, you know, I don't get paid until after 9.30 p.m. on a Thursday. It was on Thursday. I had things to do that very morning. I had to go meet with my doctor, go meet with the lady who's going to show her room, which is in campus, which costs about almost $300. I was like, well, it's not that bad, really. Pardon the moving. And parting my adjusting my glasses. I'm sorry, my glasses fall off. Anyway, we got this huge argument, and she made a comment, this is your last lie. I did not lie to her. She is under a false pretense that I had more money than her, and I was setting it aside or paying my bills. The truth was, I was hiding from her for most of the day. On my days off, I'm at Panera watching YouTube or talk to my friends in G Plus or on Skype or I'm at work. And guess what? She didn't know anything of that. I tried to explain to her I was lying to her for my own benefit to keep myself from going back to a psychiatric ward. She has threatened me with a video. She has a video out there right now planning on getting her revenge. To be fair, if you saw the video, you have a different perspective on it. In her words, I was going through her things looking for something to steal. In reality, let me remind you, she has asked me to come up, come up with some way to help her fix certain things and help her around the house because she can barely move. In fact, right now, karma has killed her to the point where she can't move at all. That's interesting, right? <laughs> anyway, I went to the police three times. One, I told her I was being threatened of blackmail. The second one, I had to go talk to the police officer and tell her she's been doing it again. And it was the day I have to meet with my future roommates. Um, <laughs> or now roommates. I looked at the house. The house was very charming. It has an older feel. It's like an old house feel to it. And the lady I've met, she was a little younger than I am, about four years. Four or three years. Three or four years. And she was the most intriguing young woman I ever met. She was very smart, very intelligent, very attractive. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back my day. Maybe you can give me a call soon. Hopefully I can get, hopefully we'll have another meeting with the other roommate. <laughs> well, <laughs> roughly around six o'clock. Six or seven o'clock, I got a call. It was Christina. She called me and said, hey, aunt wants to talk to you. I want to meet you. Something, something positive went into my mind. It's like, oh my God, did I got it? Did I got my dream home? The truth was, yes, the answer was obvious. 
I met with the gentleman. His we call him. I'm going to call him Aunt on the video. His real name is Anthony, but Aunt is a really good name. I signed the contract and the lease. Unfortunately, I didn't have the funds. I explained to them. I can only afford $100 per week for now, but for the rest of my time here, it will be on time and in full. I haven't failed. I was so excited. So, I went home. I you know, I called my parents first and said, Dad, Mom, I got a new place. So, where? I pointed it out, it was in the OSU area, but I did explain, it's on the fair, it's like close to the fairgrounds, like a railway, like across the railways, and I was like, yes, daddy, I'm so excited, so excited, it's like, I can't believe I got this place, but the truth is, I have to tell her the truth, the new, the news. I text her, I got a brand, I got news, and let me want to tell you this in person. She wanted me to text her the news. She has stated, you can't leave until after 30 days is up. You got until the end of the month. You can't leave. And this is on March 31st, not March, on May 31st. On a Sunday, we got into a huge argument. The argument was she is forcing me to pay in order for her to keep her big mouth shut. She has stated, You're the one who is crazy. You are insane. I'm afraid of you and I don't trust you. On my end, I'm afraid of her. I don't trust her. I knew what she's up to. But before, prior to the whole argument, I did research. Remember kids and future adults. Listen closely. Know the law. My best advice for you. If you want to fight something so ignorant and stupid, I highly recommend do your homework, study the law, look up the specific laws that you are interested in, finding answers, and that's what I did. I have what is called a handbook for Ohio State landlords that includes private and public and commercial. By law, if you are renting a monthly, you're giving 30 days. If you're paying weekly, you only got seven days. I was paying weekly. I was giving myself seven days to move out. I couldn't stand living with a monster who attacked me as if I done nothing wrong. She treated me like shit. And I hated that. Every moment of my waking hours, she taunts me. She <laughs> wiggling this little video in her little hand, her fat hands, saying, if you do something that will mess up us, I will destroy you. You'll be going to jail for the neck hair, and everything you work for will be all for nothing, you little whore. This is what I did. I said, shut up. You have no right to say things like that to me. I don't care if you are the owner of this place, the sole leaseholder of this place. You have no right to disrespect me. You have no right to treat me as if I'm nothing more than a child to you. I am 
an adult. If I see there's something wrong in this whole relationship of ours, it's either I fight or flee. I decide to flee. You have no knowledge of the laws. I was given 30 days. Within those 30 days, I can move out. All I have to do is look for a place and save up enough money. She kicked me out. So I did what was natural. I went straight to the police. I told her, told them everything. That was being abused verbally, mentally, and emotionally. The only thing she hasn't done is strike me. And that's probably what saved her. The police came with me. Told her to unlock the door and let me get my things. I decided to leave that very night. I could not stay another night with her. I had to leave everything behind and bring in a small bag full of my belongings. My work clothes. My extra underwear, extra socks, and making sure that I'm open. I'm packed light. I grab a blanket, my umbrella, because I knew sometime it's going to rain. <laughs> so that's what I did. And what I did is I slept behind the plasma center that's close by. My experience was cold. I was freezing. And this is the beginning of June. I spend five days living on the streets. And I have no regrets. Be fair. I have no regrets what I've done. I had to do what's necessary. I had to, I've tried everything. I tried to talk to her. I tried to explain my actions, trying to tell her the truth. Everything she said was, you're lying. I saw you. What she meant by I saw you was, she has what is called a wraparound, which is kind of like a security camera or a nanny cam. She has it all over her um, apartment. This, uh, the whole reason that was there is to hopefully help her out on security, making sure that everything was in their place. I haven't stolen anything but food. That's all I did. She made claims that I've been looking through her stuff and all that. Sure, I did, but it's to help her not for my benefit. I was offering help. And this is what I get. She what she did was took advantage of me. About her is even though she's in her mid fifties, she can't move at all. She's on disability. She's racking up a paycheck. Disability, you're only getting a small portion. About a thousand dollars per month. And that's enough money for utilities, rent, and the essentials. And plus, she's racking up a paycheck, which is about uh, about three or four hundred dollars a week, give or take. And she's only working twenty-five hours a week, thirty if she feels like it. And that's the truth. Honestly, that's considered fraud. She works in an office. She sits on her ass all day. <laughs> and trust me, I've been on my feet for eight hours straight, taking care of everybody, being the pip chipper kind of young lady I am. Yes, my friends, this is not really nice at all. Anyway. Back to my experience. On Friday, I actually called my friend. I called my roommate, my new roommate, 
asking, when do you want me to come by to give you the money? Five o'clock. Okay, I'm getting off work. I'm going straight over there, having a home. Anyway, I tried pretty much everything <coughs> in my power to just keep myself sane, keep myself keep myself calm, collective, and I was like, hallelujah, thank God, I have a home. Unfortunately, I tried to get my stuff back, including my bed. Let's just say I couldn't get it until like two weeks later. Oh, I hated her. She gave me a text message asking Denise text message me saying, "Were you in the house during the week?" To my knowledge, I was not near Whitehall. I was around Whitehall on that Friday. Unfortunately, I could not. Get in because I didn't have the key. And as for another part of the story, <laughs> I was planning on having it another video, but no. Um, I lost my key <laughs> about three or four months prior of the move. Before I moved, moved out. Or was forced to move out. And remember, this is Ohio. I mean... I lose my keys in the snow all the time. But I never lost a key like that ever until that very day I asked around. No way of finding the key. I think it was thrown away. Actually, I wish someone kept the key, but anyway. Um, okay, um, I told her no. Because I was nowhere near the area in the first place. She told me that some of my stuff has been taken out. And she thought I was there. And I know she was lying. And I have a theory. For the past six months of me living there. This is going to November. Almost a year. If I stay there for a year, not only I could not have my web camera, the laptop, I would have been either on the streets, in jail, in the ER, or in a hospital for the mental insane. Now, I am not pretty much happy with what I've done. But I have no regrets. Remember, I have no regrets on what my choices are. But I had to. This is survival. And trust me, <laughs> a girl with brains is more powerful than a girl with brawn. She was a brawn, I was a brain. So, <laughs> anyway. That Sunday, af like two Sundays after I moved out, I got a chance to get my stuff in and I was able out. I made sure I'm out within 40 minutes. Well, at least 20 minutes. That's all I needed. I asked my dad to help because he was in the area and he always helped me move in the past. I gave him um, instructions. I told him one, do not converse with her, she will tell you anything. It will make me feel very bad. Make her feel the victim. She is not the victim. She's nothing more than a liar. Two. Um, you get out of here within 30 minutes or less. Making sure that we're out of there so she can do her electrotherapy. Uh -huh. Her girlfriend was there. Now, I, she talked to me and said, look, I don't have time to talk to you. I'm busy moving my shit out so you can have a new roommate by then. She explained why. 
I took a good look at everything and pretty much half of my stuff have been missing. The theory why is she stolen almost everything. She either broke my stuff or stolen it. So I ask her why are my things I were gone? Where's my body pillow? Where are my surge protectors? Where is my space heater? Where the fuck is my um my laundry detergent? She made up a story like somebody came in the house, stolen pretty much everything that was mine. Almost my everything mine. The only things I took before, on the day I was forced to leave, was my laptop and everything that I know that is precious to me. You're welcome. <laughs> if you're out there, yeah, you're a big liar. I'm going ahead myself. Anyway, to end the story. About two months after the move, I filed a police report. Everything that's been stolen for the equivalent of $600 retail. Now, to be fair, I looked up everything. Everything, actually, some of the stuff you can sell. Everything I tallied pretty much. Um, no, it's not actually 500, it's actually like a little over 200. Added that the how much my security deposit was, it was pretty much over $500 worth of stuff. Now, I guess it's probably karma on my end that I trust her too much. I'll find out. And when I do, <laughs> the jokes are on you, man. Anyway, this vlog is going pretty long. I'm sorry if the band is playing, they're practicing, and it's Tuesday. What the hell? I. I yeah, it's Tuesday, I'm off, so. <laughs> anyway, I gotta go back to work from tomorrow afternoon and be gone all night anyway thank you everyone please like and subscribe and post some comments like oh i feel sorry for you or no you're a big lying bitch but either way i would not lie to you i would not lie to you at all anyway thank you very much and have a good night